It's Wednesday, June 8, 2022 at 2 p.m. My name is Joan Jennings. I'm the chair of the Public Art Committee. We are at this, in the City Hall second floor media room. Um, this meeting is now called to order. Uh, Megan, would you call the roll, please? Chair Jennings. Here. Vice Chair Robinson. Here. Mr. Neal. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Salo. Absent and excused. Mr. Stackhouse. Here. Ms. Hennessy. Present. Ms. Wood. Here. Okay. We have a quorum. Uh, we have some guests with us today. Would you like to um, just <coughs> give us your, <coughs> excuse me, your name and address, please? Thank you, Amy. Thank you very much. Um, I assume you all had a chance to read the minutes. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. I hear a second. Second. Is there any uh, discussion, any comments or corrections? Okay, the motion to accept the minutes. Um, Megan, can you call the roll? Chair Jennings? Yes. Vice Chair Robinson? Yes. Mr. Neal? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Stackhouse? Yes. Ms. Hennessy? Yes. Okay, we have a uh, very full agenda today, and we're starting off with uh, Mr. Stephen Oliver. Uh, he is going to give his presentation on the Black Heritage Project. Um, the time of his presentation will be approximately 20 minutes after which we will take some comments from the Public Art Committee members and the members of the public. Um, this project has already been, oh, we have another guest. Name and address, please. Lynn Whitelaw, 1612 Kilwinning Court, Palm Harbor Court. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, um, this project has already been vetted and approved by our selection panel, some of which are here with us and uh, has been refined for images and content by the artist's community and panel members. Comments will be considered by the artist and used at his discretion. Unless there is a glaring historic or other factual error, the project will proceed pretty much as submitted. Uh, Mr. Oliver indicated that he is dealing with the city attorney about uh, insurance contracts, et cetera. Um, after the project goes through its final iteration and it is approved by the PAC, it will be presented for a vote to the via, uh, Board of Commissioners. And in accordance with general instructions from Mayor Vaticiotis, all information will be presented prior to the meeting to the Board of Commissioners in the backup. Mr. Oliver, you're up. And there is a PowerPoint in your packet. Okay. Yes, there is a printout. All right, yeah, just in case I need to, uh, I use this thing, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll try to be um, uh, expedient uh, so that you can all ask uh, questions if you like. I know that you're really aware of what's going on with this project because you created it, you sponsored it. Um, um, it's an honor. Thank you for uh, enabling me to, to be here and present um, my vision for uh, fulfilling your request for the city. Um, let me just take a score with this. So there's my title slide. Um, that's one of the many historic images that I found uh, in the process, which has been taking me online and through books and libraries, et cetera. And I think, do I forward it with this? That'll be a smart shot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's called turning it on first, okay. <laughs> I would have guessed that eventually. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, that, okay. Got to push the right button. Um, this image right here is um, uh, one of uh, one in sort of the heyday of the the docks uh, when uh, you know when the sponging industry started to kind of really take off before they actually had built the concrete barrier and all that stuff. This is just basically your background about. Uh, the project in terms of trying to um, uh, celebrate the role of uh, African American or Bahamian uh, spongers in the development of Tarpon Springs. Um, 
uh, it's been interesting to kind of uh, to, 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 to find out where the locations were, and that's going to inform some of the imagery and everything that, that's incorporated in the project. Um, here are two sites. I put the map of, of Tarpon Springs on the one side. You'll see it's a 1.6 miles between the sponge docks and the uh, corner of uh, MLK and Gross Avenue at the Union Academy site. Um, I think it's just interesting to begin to think about how to connect. I'm certainly going to be doing this in terms of the art because I want people to go from one sculpture to the next. Um, they may go down 19 Pinellas, but they may also go down uh, um, the trail there right past the historical site on Safford Avenue. So, and we have that business district in between. So I think it's a really interesting opportunity to kind of just uh, show more of what the city has. On the right there, you'll see the, the, the two stars designating the sites there. Both are kind of in, on very hi highly visible like locations. I'm gonna have to go over here because I can't read it up there. So um, my conceptual strategy um, for this project is use historical and natural elements to create a painterly and engaging thematic narrative in both sculptures. This should create a visceral feeling about the local black history of sponging in the context of natural and civic environment. You'll, I'll describe that more when you, you actually get to see the proposed uh, works. Uh, I want to create connection between these two sculptures through common materials, elements, imagery, and juxtapositions within the imagery. Uh, the elements that could be <coughs> used, uh, obviously, are sponges. <laughs> uh, uh, I have envisioned black hands. You're going to see this uh, when we get to the actual uh, image. Uh, a crawl, which is like a, a, a uh, something that is actually part of the process of, of, uh, of harvesting and repairing sponges, but also has a connection to African culture. Um, maps and historical photographs, scenic and stage photography. Uh, si significantly, both sculptures are also share elements of like gateways or doorways. So uh, in one of them, you're going to see that it's like it's a gateway to the sponge dock, but it's also encouraging people to go through and explore the thing in the, in, in the, in the, in the round. Uh, and you'll see similar imagery uh, or forms in the, in the second site at Union Academy. Uh, uh, and they have both of them have a sort of sense of reciprocity to them that different like going through the gateway like having two sides so that uh, you know it gives an ability to kind of uh, resonate between the idea of the black and the Greek sponging and their their approaches and what they contributed and and obviously what they how they may have collaborated too um, <coughs> so um, in terms of the two sites, this is an interesting proposal because uh, a project because the two sites are usually you're looking about one piece of art or something that's like really clearly designated a campus, a college campus, something like that. So in, interpretive panels may be helpful in terms of uh, in engaging people's curiosity and getting them to motivate them to go to the next site or or, or make make it part of a tour for them. Um, black sponges, many black sponges of Tarver strings came from the Bahamas, as you know. The motto of the Bahamas is forward, upward, and onward together. That's something that I kind of uh, latched onto early, and uh, it's receded a little bit in terms of its visual, but I still think it's still in the mix because it's a very powerful theme, and I think it applies to, uh, it applies to anywhere, but it can apply particularly to the idea of going forward with more history, uh, shared history together here in Tarpon Springs. Uh, so this theme is be, will be helped to use to connect the two sculptures as well as the community while celebrating uh, the early collaboration between black and street, black and Greek spongers. This is your uh, the site number one on Dodecanese Avenue. Um, I quickly gravitated towards this site because as I was going down, you'll see on the right side and lower right side, the uh, the approach road. You'll see a slight bend, and that bend turn is right where the trolley stop is. Uh, of course, is right where the sign for the chamber and the beginning of the sponge dock starts, and th and that the, on the on the left side you'll see the bench there, which is designates a trolley waiting area. Right behind that are two trees, and a space of 21 foot three inches between. It was, it was a perfect spot I felt to put something uh, that could announce the the district and uh, hopefully be colorful and engaging and something that people would look at while they're waiting for the trolley. 
here's another shot uh, of the other side here. Um, on the, you'll see a small shot that shows you that there, that waterfront that's, when you look through that opening in the trees, but then there's also the back side. So this is something that people can actually uh, explore, in the, again, in the round. That's my hope. And I also noticed that there's some electricity there, too, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I'll be doing is exploring a little bit more of the site in terms of the trees and the roots and things like that for foundation considerations, you know. Um, so the strategy for uh, uh, site number one is to locate it in a highly visible, access, uh, an accessible location, which is a trolley stop was like a, a bullseye, I felt. Uh, I wanted to create a colorful beacon so that something that would be attractive, something that would uh, draw people and, uh, and engage them and help beautify the area, um, make an artistic gateway um, for, for the sponge docks and its history uh, while focusing on the history of, the, of black sponging and the, and the collaboration with the Greeks, uh, the early Greeks. So um, again, interpretive panels. We're not sure where they'll be located, but something could happen right in that area um, to encourage people to connect with the other sculpture. Uh, and basically to help drive cultural education and awareness, uh, tourism and civic pride, um, and what kind of, uh, you know, deepen the meaning of what it means maybe to be this sponge capital of the world. I think it's a really unique opportunity um, in the cultural context nationally and in national discussions. I think it's a positive <laughs> step to put forward to sort of look at shared history um, and collaboration. Okay. Go to the next one. So this is my response to the first site, uh, the first sculpture at the at the um, the sponge docks. Um, <laughs> this was the most challenging, even though it was the smaller of the two sculptures. Um, but I'm getting very satisfied with the form this is taking now. Um, these are sort of uh, we've got three, probably going to have five sides actually to them, smaller sides that are. Um, as you'll see, that I have a study model that I could even pass around here. Uh, yeah, this, is, this is an approximation of what it would be like. Uh, you have these two kind of uh, columns, if you will. Uh, they are angled um, so that when you're coming down the road, you see that sort of aqua sort of panel. It's, a, it's, a, it's about 10 feet tall. Uh, that's a material called, it's, a, it, it's an exterior, ec, an architectural resin material um, called either Lumicor, there's another company that makes it called Freeform, I have samples from both. That can be digitally printed, which is the medium throughout this work. It's all stainless steel framework and then digitally printed uh, exterior architectural resin. So all that imagery can be manipulated and created, that's the painterly thing that I mentioned. So you'll see that sort of water kind of effect there on that tall panel. That's kind of like the from a, coming down the side, like you're going to kind of see that. I wanted you, I wanted that color to really draw you in. Uh, when your eye goes up, you'll see that it almost looks like a keystone. There's a pair of black hands holding like a sponge there. That'll probably be like a have to be a stage photograph that I take. So I wanted to make a clear amount announcement about what the theme of this was <laughs> without having anybody didactic and draw people in. Um, and the and the other thing about this is that. Um, I think the medium it allows for a lot of uh, input from different things. You'll see, for instance, some of the colorful patterns. I wanted to be colorful. I've drawn from the actual physical nature of sponges. That pinkish, that's actually a vase sponge. <laughs> and then, then that little keystone in the lo lower corner is a photograph of the same type of sponge sitting on a beach. Um, so there's some inherently educational things that people don't necessarily see. Um, or would, they wouldn't necessarily see in, a, in a maybe a different type of sculpture. Um, on the right side of that, um, you'll see uh, basically that's supposed to be a topographic map um, of the Enclote River. I was thinking about like the areas where the sponging actually was discovered and found, and then you'll, there's a little inset keystone of like an image of black sponges in a boat. And you also see that conch shell. <laughs> that's a little reference to sort of like their, their cultural heritage and their being linked to the Bahamas. So that'll probably repeat itself also in the second sculpture. And above that, you'll see some imagery, which is sort of like kind of uh, uh, es essentially like a horizon, a shot, a scenic shot of uh, the Enclote River. 
and then it's got a reverse side. That's kind of what it looks like sort of under the canopy of trees there for scale. Uh, those trees are 21 foot three apart at the trunks, and they're about 14, 15 feet to the lower branches. Um, and I think a little trimming can be done, but I tried to do this so it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't be any major arboring needed, just minor trimming perhaps. That's the reverse side. This is the side of the sculpture that's facing the waterfront, what you would see if you were on the docks looking back. And so the keystone image is, uh, uh, right now I've got the image of this, this pair of hands clipping the same, like clipping a sponge as in processing it, you know, a pair of black hands doing that. Um, and you'll see that sort of that blue watery kind of, uh, um, you know, again, similar to the first, the announcement from the other side. That panel is, uh, is sort of representative, um, I should have said this before, but that is re representative of sort of the, 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 the helmeted diving, while that first one that you see on the other side is sort of the, the hook diving. So within those kind of watery images, you're gonna see some, some imagery that evokes those two types of, of, of sponging, which were what the, uh, the Bahamians and the, and the, uh, and the Greeks did. Uh, again, on the right side, there's more sort of imagery of sponging and I've got a little inset of the crawl, of the crawl, which is that pen that holds the uh, sponges. Again, some of these things are gonna be new to people, which is good. They'll be able to learn more about sponging, um, as well as hopefully get the connection between all of these elements, this sculpture and the next one. On that right side, I've got like, instead of a, a, a topographic of the river, I've got actually a map of the town. So now you're looking back through the gateway toward the town. Now you're seeing an early map that will hopefully, I'll be able to depict sort of a couple of these areas uh, that were sort of like this central sponging areas. I think there was Bailey's Bluff and there was Sponge Point and, and finally the docks and surrounding warehouses and things. So something I'm gonna try to do that evokes that and inset in that is an image of um, uh, like a, of a, of a um, inside a warehouse people processing sponges together, the Greeks with African Americans or Bahamians in there and you'll see that, and again, another scenic at the top of that, which is uh, um, the image of that waterfront when it was te early teeming with sponge harvesting and stuff like that. So um, remember to hold your questions if you have anything about that. I can go back. Um, this is the site number two over at the corner of uh, Gross Avenue and MLK Boulevard. Um, uh, that. Um, Green patch is the, uh, is sort of, it's actually a drainage area for the parking lot and it's got a perimeter fence. I'm proposing to replace that uh, fence uh, with a sculpture that still performs the, uh, the function of, of enclosing that area. Um, some of the things I kind of went to multiple sites to look at it under rainy conditions and I noticed things growing there. I think it was deliberately planted with things like milkweed like you'll see in the lower corner there. Um, because they're water loving plants, I guess. And then I will notice some things, um, caterpillars and other things in there. So I think not much modification needs to happen to the actually greenery, maybe addition of a few interesting floral things that achieve those functions. And I'm thinking perhaps some gravel area around uh, the base of the sculpture so that like I'm aware of things splashing up. You wanna, wanna kind of keep uh, organic matter from splashing up on the base of the sculpture. That's an important concern for me. Uh, this is site number two strategy. I have to read it on my computer because I can't. All right, again, a highly visible location was important. Um, and having it be sort of a beacon, um, illuminated from internal or from natural light. In both cases, both sites have electricity. Um, in that first case, first site, we actually could illuminate it from inside. This particular sculpture, it's less necessary to do that, but I'll show you that when you get, you'll, you'll, you'll see when I show you the image of it. Um, so th this, this larger area, it's about 30 feet or so uh, by 20 feet, allows for sort of more presence of the larger black community to be portrayed in the sculpture. So the idea is to sort of link some of the imagery and themes and then expand on it a little bit with, uh, with, with the imagery around this, uh, uh, this particular site. Um, let's see, so again, I wanna instill curiosity in, in, uh, in visitors as well as community members who will, can explore some of their own history and hopefully also go to the other sculpture on the sponge docks and see their linkage to the past and sponging. Um, 
So this will hopefully again drive education, awareness, tourism, and civic pride from within, not just from the idea of being the sponge capital of the world. And I'll go to the next one. This is the, uh, the, the latest rendition of this. You may have seen an earlier one. I've now unfilled those look like what look like fence pickets with more scenic imagery that's taken from um, the, the riverfront, uh, the beachfront where the grass is, some of the forested, some of the forested uplands, including I even have one of the backdrops has actually a shot from the Rose Cemetery. Uh, so basically this resin material, um, I'll, sh I'll, I'll pass this other sculpture around, this little model around now. Um, <laughs> Uh, this enables you to, um, it can be cut. So um, I, you know, would have these uh, images printed on this material, cut, and they can actually become pickets, and that enables uh, that rather large wall surface area to be permeable so the air is not, it's not, it's less, a lot less force on it. <laughs> um, and then images uh, printed on solid, they can either be, they can either be, um, uh, sort of um, uh, translucent or opaque. You can choose, um, or they can be backlit. But there's a whole series of these panels. I'll sh sh just so you can see that. That's one example. Uh, some of them have the images laminated right in between. Um, and there's a couple thicknesses. But in any case, these sort of are um, around 30 or so or more feet long, enable like quite a bit of imagery to be uh, placed on them and will form a bit of a narrative. The idea is that one side leans a little bit more towards the history, the other one leans a little bit more towards the present, and they both kind of connect to that sponging history. Uh, you'll see the, the two end kind of caps, which are that uh, part of the sculpture, yeah, well, either end, one's facing the intersection, which is the uh, there's got a picture of the woman who was a school teacher there <laughs> uh, at the Union Academy, and you'll see the actual Union, older Union Academy nested within that image, and another map that's facing the intersection. The other side, facing the um, the Citizens Alliance for Progress building, uh, has got the, the, those hands with the sponge again, and it has a famous person there, Mr. Emerson. <laughs> um, he was in an earlier rendition. It seems like it's a good idea, uh, perhaps still, to keep him there. But I also like this idea of a male and a female figure in this sculpture. It helps the sense of nuclear family and community, the theme. And both sides, you'll notice how both of these things sort of like, um, both of the, 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 the long sides, they kind of ramp up or they kind of like, they, they, they flow up. That's kind of a gesture of reciprocity and, and the whole idea of the theme of lifting, lifting forward and upward which actually you'll see in the end cap, you'll see the words are actually in this in the sculpture. So um, I did that little study model just to give you a sense that it's not like a straight up and down fence that's existing. It's a little, it's more sort of like sculptural. It's, it's angled in and it's a little curved and those things are also gonna create a little more strength too to this thing. Um, the triangulation you see in both sculptures actually is gonna help, you know, with wind, you know, and all that kind of stuff, so. Um, this is a um, uh, sampling of visuals of materials here. There's a sculpture on the left which is made of similar materials, a very tall one. Those are digitally printed panels. It's internally lit. Um, there's a couple companies that make this material, Freeform and Lumicore, two of them. I've been exploring and talking to reps for both. Um, I've been gotten some quote on steel from Auro Steel, um, who's a local company. Uh, and the idea is to use 3016 stainless steel, which is like the highest grade of marine grade stainless steel for the structure, and actually all the hardware as well. It's a little hard to see, but in the lower right corner, there's like a little, it's called a standoff. Uh, I'm very cons one of the things I'm gonna do in detailing this is that all the panels get, uh, whether they attach to a structure it, or, to them s or, or to another layer, there's always a spacer of some kind to keep moisture from staying and condensing. We always want airflow and, and things dry out. And so you don't have, just, you just you don't have issues that way. Okay, and there's uh, my, uh, that's a little bit of uh, my draft schedule. Um, 
Again, I should have brought my eyeglasses so I could see it all the way up there. <laughs> <laughs> I got to read it from my screen down here. Hey, you know. Okay, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if they're my prescription, but <laughs> any case. <laughs> um, so uh, th this month, the idea is to obviously present to you all and perhaps even get to the Board of Commissioners to show them this and get an approval, uh, you know, exercise the contract and, uh, you know, get a disbursement and start, uh, start going on the next phase, which will in include uh, some more research and some photography and things like that. Um, well, I've gotten a lot done, though, so I'm excited. And I've got some leads, so I'm <coughs> ready to go for that. Then basically of, an, of about a four-month period, design development, creating of the files that will go into printing all those panels, doing some prefabrication or mock-ups of things. Um, and then uh, come around November, basically get going on fabrication. Um, I would want to uh, basically have those uh, panels ready to be printed, those files be ready to be printed. So, um, you know, uh, and I kind of, I kind of did this as a, a draft. The way I laid out, laid it out, and laid out the disbursements was I wanted to kind of make sure that if there was an opportunity to surge a little forward, it wouldn't be a hold up, you know, um, in the in the funding. At the same time, there's a fourth disbursement, so there's actually like a final one when everything's completed. So. I try to serve both sides that way. And uh, let me see if I get the next one. Mm -hmm. And basically, that is it. That is the end. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see the butterfly. I also caught on another uh, trip to the site, so uh, feeding on the milkweed there. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions. I don't know what the time is like, but. Um, okay. So mm -hmm. at the end, we'll start with you. Do you have any comments? I should or? pass it to you. No questions at all. This is um, <laughs> I'm passing around a couple of different samples of that material with actual historical images, and they're printed in either translucent or backlit and different version or opaque versions. So there's a lot of thinking <coughs> that's going to have to go into all those panels, but it's okay. It's like it's just it's it's getting there. I think it'll be. Uh, go ahead. My first take is um, great enthusiasm for the number of hooks, if I may use that mm -hmm. term, that you've built in, particularly in the Dodecanese site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's pattern and color and visual stimulation. Um, there's the map. There is There are the historic photographs. So there are so many points of entry for people. I, I really um, respect that and, and yeah. like that approach. Yeah, um, thank you. It's kind of an interesting thing because it's like um, I, I've got some background in exhibition design and architecture, and, and it's like all these things kind of colliding, but it ultimately needed to be kind of a piece of artwork. So it's like that's where the beauty of the medium, a uh, graphic medium, I think, enables you to kind of distill and work on it so you can refine it into something that's visually engaging and like feels like art, not just like a, a signpost or a sandwich board or whatever. I, I think mm -hmm. you have achieved that, particularly on that site. And you know, the other side of the coin is I think the Union Academy site lends itself more toward um, introspection and mm -hmm. interpretive mm -hmm. material. Yeah. Uh, and I think you've, you've done that. So I have no questions. My first take is, is very positive. Yeah. Bill? I completely agree with uh, uh, Lucy Ann. Uh, impressed by the materials. I, I like the blend of the different mm -hmm. materials and how you're kind of weaving it all together. And again, you, you, you probably have a lot of things to do to get to the final, what you're going to oh, put yeah. where and, and, and <laughs> what the uh, subject matter or some of that's going to be. But real impressed with the initial look yeah. at it and, and your material selection. Yeah, thanks. There's, there's a bit of the weeds still to go in there too because these all these come with different finishes. So I'm trying to, I, I've already started to hone down on the, the finish uh, that, they, uh, that they come in. I want the finish that, that they, uh, to be the one which is the least, the most scratch resistant, yeah. but also the easiest to sort of clean or whatever it is. So That was going to be one of my questions. Yeah. Is, you know, the, the ability to clean it off if mm -hmm. we were to get something. So yeah, the, the, from, the, from the, the first thing to do actually, in turn, and I mentioned this with, the, with the, the detailing in terms of having it be like, uh, Oh, those the, on that, you see the sculpture, they're actually will be kind of permeable 
You know, I mean, you get a little sliver of a crack there. That's all so air and water can flow in and out, and there's not, you know, <clears> like <throat> condensation behind the window. <laughs> it's not going to be the right thing. Um, that's the idea with this. So um, um, if you do that, you're already ahead because you're not getting, like, uh, gunk, right? And there, I even thought about those leaves that might fall. I'm trying to make it so there's just nothing really there they can land. They just kind of get blown away by the wind. Um, one key thing is going to be whether the base, I have it right, rising up off the ground a little bit. That's partly for the splash. It's also for the air. Um, whether that's going to be enclosed or not, I'm still working on that. One way or another, we have to keep the leaves out of there. You know, um, from if maybe they blow out or they're not there in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I'm anxious to see what you do yeah. with lighting as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, with the, that possibility. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping we do LEDs for, for energy efficiency. I'm not, sure who, I'm not sure who owns that like little meter there <laughs> that we're hoping to draw electricity from. So I think it's a cost, I know. Anything else? All those Graham nest cells. <coughs> yeah, a couple of things. First of all, I'm, I, I love the locations and the, the concept. Um, you know, it seems, seems really, really good to me. Um, the... Um, the academy site. Mm -hmm. I notice in your model. Um, I know it's just a model, but mm -hmm. it is nevertheless a, a conceptual thing. Um, there's no gate, um, but there needs to be a gate for maintenance for the interior. Right. Those actually, those end panels could actually be made to be hinged, so okay. that you could they could function like that. And it, they actually got the imagery of a door. <laughs> but uh, okay. but yeah, I thought about as, that as because there is a gate on the existing fence. You know, yeah. if yeah. anybody needs to get in there to do anything, yeah. Well, they they have to get in there and clean it out every now and again. And, right. And, yeah. You know, so I, I thought we should probably keep the gate. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and um, the area around um, the current fencing, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned um, um, putting gravel or something mm -hmm. there because it's. Um, I agree. The the current mm -hmm. dead grass look is. Mm -hmm. Not nice. So, you know, something yeah. better than that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yes. Hopefully, you know, gravel that won't travel very far. Mm -hmm. uh, um, as, as you're talking, I'm kind of thinking that it might be nice to, I mean, this is sort of like an environmental thing because there's like got milkweed and things that are deliberately, yes. but if we um, cut a perimeter at the, where the water line, basically near the water line is, we could s just carve that, st uh, that, that turf back. Probably, there may be a nice ground cover, which was like no maintenance would be really beautiful. Yeah. A ring of that and then a ring of gravel would be mm -hmm. wonderful because then you, you know, that's yeah. what I and would it, probably yeah. think. Yeah, it needs, it's, it's yeah. going to need something. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious about the use of the word kraal. Mm -hmm. um, is that a word that was used by um, the um, sponge hookers here in, in Tarpon yes. at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Because... To, to be honest, my first thought when I, when I first heard the word was, oh, my God, um, that's an Afrikaans word. And, you know, the connotations with Afrikaner words is, is like, mm -hmm. no, no, we don't want to do that. Um, but if it's something that the sponges called the things that they kept the sponges in, that's, that's great. That's mm -hmm. fine. Right. That, that is, a, you know, it's an interesting point, cultural point, because uh, that word in South Africa may have sort of, uh, it would have probably replaced an indigenous word, you know, for something similar, but basically the, the meaning of it, and it could have even been pejorative from, depending on your perspective, but there's a... Well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, kraal is actually derived from the, the Dutch word, um, uh, which is very similar sounding, um, and, uh, and comes from the same root as um, the Spanish corral, which of course we... Okay, we've yeah. And we've adopted both words into mm -hmm. English, one um, via Spanish in the U.S. and the other via Dutch in, and Afrikaans in, mm -hmm. in South Africa. Um, the Zulu word, the, the, the majority language, the, the next majority language there is um, um, Zulu. Mm -hmm. And it's um, Isibaya mm -hmm. is the name that um, the Zulus call uh, Kral. Kral's mm -hmm. a completely adopted word mm -hmm. for them too. But it's been there for a couple of hundred years, so yeah. you know it's like everything else. That's really good insight. Yeah, <laughs> Robert. Anyway, that's oh. all I got. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Steve, uh, as I mean, you've you've told a done done a wonderful job of uh, doing public art. I mean, you you've got as you said two locations that connect two different cultures, two different places in one in one 
place and you uh, um, you check all the boxes of what's really necessary in, in, a, in a good piece of public art in that it, it uh, doesn't answer everything but it presents a lot mm -hmm. and and I think that's what it is I mean we each and every one of us will will in, be involved in this and um, make our own story in a way and, and that's what's important about this is that this this uh, uh, sort of fulfills some of the need of this particular project of the African American hair or the American Af the black heritage in in uh, Tarpon Springs, and uh, it it brings that to to the storyline of of Tarpon Springs, and I think that's great. So um, art wise, everything it's you know it's got you got all your color that you usually do, you know, and uh, <laughs> it, that that's just amazing attractor right to begin with, and uh, then you have all this information that you come back to and you say, oh, I didn't see that before, and things like that. That's mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, I'm going to come down to uh, another level of this, though, is that how much engineering have you had done on these structures? And, and I'm, I'm just saying that because we went through something here with mm -hmm. some standing naiads that weren't engineered properly to go into the <laughs> ground. And, yeah. and uh, they had to be taken down. That all had to be reinforced and put back in. So, um, so I don't... I didn't see any kind of place here for any kind of engineering that you might do in, in order to place this. I've seen your other works in other places that have had engineering of some sort, but mm -hmm. have you, you know, is, is that a, a major consideration? The, the, uh, the four or five corners of the, mm -hmm. the uh, one on the docks, they're just sitting on the ground right now. But, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, how, how do they attack? Right, um... There's, I'm thinking of two, one of two things there, and I think the, 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 the determinant will, is going to be sort of the, the, the way the tree roots are working in that area. Um, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's an 11 foot three uh, uh, between curbs there. So my first thought was to like uh, excavate a little bit and like pour a slab in there uh, and then have all those things anchored right into the slab. So you really got like a real good, like, like you've got a real good weight. Um, the other option, depending on the roots, was it might be to do less of a slab and maybe some pilings or something. It, it depends on what we run into there. Um, so I'm going to look a little more closely at that. The sculptures otherwise, and this is actually, I was sweating this one particularly because it was a lot, you know, it was just trickier than the other sculpture. And I backed away from a lot of like, you know, if you notice at the top of this, it's a lot more light and airy now. I had sort of like these more like, large forms, possibly curved forms, which are more of like a windsock. And now I just got the, a lot less leverage on the top of these things. And I've also got the triangulation going. And I've got things where wind's going to go either way versus like up against the wall. And I think what will happen, you'll see how it's kind of straight up and down there. I think some more angle is going to go into these things. The way it's the way the study model is showing me that I think there's going to be more angles. And there's probably going to be some slivers of more color uh, and separation uh, in there, which will create more structure. So um, uh, I was I was happy with the direction because I felt like I wasn't creating something that's going to like really take it hit if it yeah. start gets really windy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the one advantage to what you said, the second option for that is to say put some kind of pillars in there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sonitudes buried mm -hmm. concrete, mm -hmm. and, and then you would have a number of them in different places. Right. Uh, as opposed to one slab, which still could be, shear could still affect the slab if it's not done correctly without mm -hmm. killing the trees. I mean, that's right. That's the other thing, yeah. Which you don't want to do. Right. So, I mean, it, it gets down to this is a sculpture that adheres to the laws of, of the universe, in other words, mm -hmm. gravity mm -hmm. and <laughs> wind and, and all that kind of stuff. And you're on the, the side of uh, a body of water. And uh, right. so there's, there's that kind of aspect in, in, I think, both cases. I, the, the one at the Academy is, is a little bit different. That's acting way more like a fence. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is an inherent fear factor for me in how close it is to the road mm -hmm. uh, without any bollards there or anything like that to keep mm -hmm. cars from running through it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that's a, uh, you know, that, that's the problem with the, mm -hmm. the real world in some ways is that mm -hmm. that just rose my attention to that and uh, 
Um, but there, there isn't anything you can do about that as, mm -hmm. as per that site. I, I know a lot of places, they do put up bollards mm -hmm. in front of things. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, you do have a fire hydrant. <laughs> That's true. There is a fire, and then there's a lamp post on the other side as well. <laughs> so, so other, other than that, I mean, I, I think you really, you really, yeah, checked all the boxes on this thing, and really uh, done your research. And, and like I said, I think you started a dialogue about this. You're not, you're not giving us any encyclopedic answer to it. Mm -hmm. But that's not what your job is mm -hmm. as an artist. Mm -hmm. Debbie, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I really like site one. I like that your panes extend up over the top, your blue and green. Mm -hmm. I think that that gives you that upward mm -hmm. sensation. It, and to me, it represents the water, mm -hmm. the river. I mean, it's very, I, I like it very, very much. Are these pieces reflective? Uh, there is a certain amount of reflective, like for reflectivity or or, or look, you know, iridescence, mm -hmm. depending upon which side you're looking at. Those taller panels, mm -hmm. they're going to sort of definitely feel a little iridescent because of the, the colors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we have complete control of what we print. So mm -hmm. in Photoshop, whatever, you can make some really interesting things. I mean, I should have, when I started to describe that, I should have said earlier, like the idea that you could see uh, something to do with a sponge hooking perhaps in there or something at the bottom of the water could all be layered in there, uh, there's even the potential to put, you could even kind of put ghosts of the islands where these people came from. You know, both came from sets of islands, so I don't know, it's just another thing that could be woven in. Well, interestingly enough, when the sun sets, it mm -hmm. sets almost directly in line with that, so I bet you it would be really... Actually, it is a, it is a, uh, an east-west, uh -huh. and actually when well, like I was describing how these may have separate, that may actually be interesting to see what happens with the, with the, with this. I, I like it very much. Um, on, on the second site, mm -hmm. um, I have a couple of concerns. Mm -hmm. What are the dimensions of this? Um, it's, it's going to be in the neighborhood that, that at the most highest point, it's around close to eight feet. Um, and the length of that, those sides, they're going to, uh, the last time I measured, the sides are going to be somewhat close to 39, 42 feet, the two sides of that thing. And they're, they're a little curved. Okay. Um, it gets a little longer because I'm curving it, I guess. Um, Does mm -hmm. the chain length then stay? No, 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 that goes. Okay. That's, it's All like right. a complete okay. replacement. That goes Pressing away. Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just looking at it. Um, but the other thing that I want to say is that um, I wonder the height of it if it's going to be obstructive to any drivers? Uh, it's actually in the corner, so um, what do you think? Something to consider. Something to think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, can, can I say something mm -hmm. about sure. that? I, I know there, there's, excuse my harping on engineering here, mm -hmm. <laughs> but <coughs> civil engineers, mm -hmm. as opposed to structural engineers, mm -hmm. have guidelines for that. Right. In other words, how you can obstruct coming mm -hmm. cross, crossing traffic and mm -hmm. what these sight lines are. I don't know if there's any mm -hmm. kind of, uh, if, if the city ha here has any, uh, it's usually a city thing, uh, but, but um, um, civil engineering is all about that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so it, you know, and, and it Maybe, maybe some of your research, you have here in your first phase, you're going to do some more research and stuff, mm -hmm. so you might want to look at that. That might, it might alter some of the height of the thing, mm -hmm. how far it dips down, or right. whatever it is. You might, mm -hmm. you might find yourself having to adjust to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's also uh, could fall under the category of, of uh, um, uh, um, um, a, 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 a nuisance. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I trying to use? It's, it's a legal word, uh, attractive nuisance. It's a legal <laughs> word in, in <laughs> contracts, is that you're attracting people to do harm <laughs> to themselves okay. on, on a particular sculpture. Okay. Yeah. But it, it's related. I'm sorry. I'm that's, going that's okay. Yeah. Another thing that I find really important, though, is that especially since it's right in front of the school, mm -hmm. um, 
and it's almost like a fence being replaced with another fence. Mm -hmm. Does anybody feel that? Mm -hmm. You do. And, and I just wonder if that's really, I love all the artwork that it represents, and I don't know how you would incorporate all that artwork in a different form, but it just looks like an, a, like a, a, an eight-foot fence. Yeah, it's uh, that one of the reasons I brought the model was to try to convey to see it's see it's sort of like angled and curving, mm -hmm. so it's more sculptural than like you know. Right, it's more typical, sculptural, yeah. but it it to me it's still mm -hmm. a fence, mm -hmm. and I would want them to have something really beautiful. I love all the imagery that's on that's on it, but um, I'm crazy about one. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Bill, you had a comment on this? Yeah, just on the, it's probably set back from the intersection itself as opposed to the height <coughs> that's probably yeah. going to be the issue. So mm -hmm. as long as you're pulled back in off the, mm -hmm. that intersection right. far enough, it'll probably, mm -hmm. but you, it should, we should, yeah. should probably run it through mm -hmm. the city. Right. Actually, sure I, I was concerned about that too, and I actually went there and had a look. Mm -hmm. And the current fence is set back about um, four, five feet from the edge of the sidewalk. The sidewalk is about four feet mm -hmm. wide. And if you're pulled up to the stop sign coming down gross to turn left onto MLK, um, there's no visibility problem at all. But I, as, again, I'm sure city engineers city need to look at it and, and take a look. Um, maybe if you thought of it as the bones of a, a boat instead of well, uh, the stripes Well, actually, of the I do see it as a boat. Yeah. I do it's see a boat the, shape. So. I do see yeah. the boat shape. Yeah. I, um, it, I don't think that the children will be able to appreciate that from no. above. But it, Robert, isn't oh. it supposed to oh, be Bill? a sponge corral? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Know, so I think as long as it's identified at that, I think that's really cool because you have mm -hmm. taken something that's really an eyesore with that chain link fence, yeah. and it, you've done right. something... <laughs> Amazing. I appreciate the conversation because it's like some of the servicing some of the things that were coming through like it, it is and it, matter of fact some of the imagery of that corral is actually uh, in the pickets um, and and beyond that the the boat theme was something that was running through even both sculptures I just the top of the other one of course transformed into something a little bit differently it was more like waves um, but that was a part of the intent that 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 shape was somehow connected to sculptures Robert um, just uh, about your comment about the, the, the fence, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think um, my take on it when you said picket and picket mm -hmm. fence, mm -hmm. I thought of community. Mm -hmm. And I thought of uh, a picket fence is, a, is an attraction in a, in a community usually. It's not, it's not a, a chain link fence. Mm -hmm. right. Just keep out, go mm -hmm. away, we don't want right, you. Yeah. Right, yeah. The picket fence is one that you you can talk to your neighbor over, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and I think I think I got that from that as as, mm -hmm. as uh, much as anything. But you know, maybe um, you know, uh, it it has multiple meanings, and and this is where people are going to see these things. I'm thinking eight feet high. Eight feet I high. I can't talk to you yeah, over it. Yeah, and you know that could be a gate, that could be an arbor, you know, or, or whatever. I mean, you could. And that's that's only at the top point because so, it's going down closer to four as it scoops yeah. as it sweeps down into the so there's like this gestural thing going from one side to the next so it's going yeah. I, I think one of the things that, that we're talking about is you're still researching mm -hmm. this you're still uh, sure. developing yeah. you, sure. you've mentioned that throughout this whole thing and I appreciate that how you're letting this develop especially in listening to us is that um, it's possible that it would be lower at some point than it is now, mm -hmm. and high enough at another point to make that statement, maybe mm -hmm. at the edges where there are the gates or the, the way into it. And stuff. So that would be uplifting. It mm -hmm. would also um, be a little bit more of, uh, lyrical. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think uh, that, that model is just, yeah. you know, right. right now it's just looking it's all, you know, from a distance, it almost looks the same. I'm just right. looking across mm -hmm. the room at it. It almost looks the same. Could be exaggerated mm -hmm. more, I think. Mm -hmm. maybe. I mean, I'm not, I shouldn't be telling you. Shut up. <laughs> no, I thought it was a good, okay. well, I appreciated uh, that. The, Lyrical the, is a good word. The clock on the wall is ticking I, I just wanted to ask one question. I just, I love both of them. Mm -hmm. I think they're phenomenal, and I'm, I'm excited about it. The only question I have is that at the second site, it's also at Union Academy, there's quite a bit of children mm -hmm. all the time. Have you given any thought to 
you know, children climbing on it or, you know, that sort of thing. And, and how Yeah, my first is. thought was to try to make it um, a little too high to climb on. <laughs> that was my first thought. But then it's scooping down somewhat. So um, the, the second thought is to, is to make it not that easy to climb onto. So it's, they're pretty slick surfaces. Um, and um, so... It, yeah, you just, it wouldn't be that easy, you know, um, you know, hopefully it's more visually engaging. They're less interested in getting over and, uh, you know. Well, it is a bus stop too, yeah. right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> looking at it and it. getting inside <laughs> of it. I have a four-year-old granddaughter and she'll climb on anything. Yeah. As, as long as they can't wriggle underneath it yeah. and use it right. as a secret smoke spot. Right. <laughs> well, they will. <laughs> okay, Stephen. Yeah, I think I think you've done a wonderful job. As just about everybody on the uh, committee said, you've ch uh, checked all the boxes, and thank you for letting us also know that it's still a work work in progress. Um, I'd love to see some lighting and illumination. I think that would really make it stand out at both locations, and you know. Uh, my thing would be to perhaps substitute some more of the historic photographs than like the the pictures of the river. Mm -hmm. but that's that's just mm -hmm. me. But we're going to open the, com uh, the comments to the public, and if you could confine yourselves to four minutes, like they do at the uh, at the uh, board of commissioners meeting. Anyone from the public like to have any comments, questions? Tina. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So most of my comments are going to be mm -hmm. oriented towards that. But first of all, fantastic. Thank you. Very nice. Um, I, and I want to say that the site of um, on Great Apennines is particularly appropriate because that's an area that in the very early days of Parfum, I believe that's where Patton's Mill was, which mm -hmm. was one of the first sites mm -hmm. of, of the African-American community. Mm -hmm. You know, So they were, okay. uh, the community was in that area at first before they moved farther south. So okay. very appropriate sightings. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was you had that sort of path coming through Union Academy. Mm -hmm. And I happen to know that uh, Freeman is, has a grant application out to do more oral history work mm -hmm. in the African American community. Mm -hmm. But I also happen to know from some work that I did with oral histories in the African American community that there was a business district. And I think it was sort of along Safford. Safford. I just read, I just, I think it was in your email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I've got uh, a list of some of those. Oh, wow. So what I'm thinking is if they do this, maybe at some point there will be markers that could be a more marked kind of path mm -hmm. the of the African American community. That would be a great, yeah, um, addition. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I thought might be great that you may or may not know about but I, um, I worked on the application for Rose Hill Cemetery, mm -hmm. and one of my very favorite um, grave markers is, I think the name was Albert Brooks, mm -hmm. but it shows a diver. And there were, oh, yeah. there were Greek um, hookers, a lot of Greek hookers, and there were several um, African-American divers, mm -hmm. and apparently he was one of them. Mm -hmm. And while they got the diving suit, perfect diving suit, wrong in his headstone, <laughs> is he still there as a diver? Yeah. And I, I just sent him a picture of that. And I mm -hmm. thought, that's going to be wonderful. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. Also, I wanted to look, I don't know if you may very well know, Reverend Emerson used to go sponging when he was a young teenager because his uncle, uh, John Hanna, uh, was, mm -hmm. uh, was a hooker. I'm trying to go get to see him, hopefully soon. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I got yeah. there recently. Yeah. Yes. He's still doing well. That's good. Um, uh, crawls. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, when I visited the Bahamas, and this was in 2008, I saw a crawl, and they are called crawls. Mm -hmm. They're um, in use, mm -hmm. and I have a photograph. Mm -hmm. If you ever need an updated photograph. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. You know, I think I, I think I can retrieve it. Um, one thing I also wanted to say, not just to you, but to the city in general, Sponge capital of the world is something that lasted for about 10 or 15 years. Yeah. You know? And no one ever <coughs> challenges that, that adoration. They do in Europe. But it's just something that's true for most of its history. You know? So, um, and I think that's, that's about it. Thank you. Yeah. Annie, Lynn? Yeah. Two things to the overall did an excellent job on it. What I really like about it the most is the 
historical part where the educational part brings out the early history and that way our children when they're mm -hmm. around us mm -hmm. can learn about the early history of Talking Springs because much history has been forgotten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, Stephen and I, you know, considered the thing about doing perhaps a QR code or something that would take people to more you know, information, mm -hmm. you know, about, you know, the historical figures on the, uh, mm -hmm. but that's something else again. I mean, right now we're just mm -hmm. concerned with the, with the art piece, which I think is phenomenal. Lynn? So you're Hi, Reverend. I'm here to say some uh, accolades to Thank you. I you. think you have really nailed what we intended this project to be and embraced it, not on a large sense, but on a local community response to it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stephen, thank you very much. We look forward to its next evolution. Mm -hmm. And um, onward and forward. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, back to the agenda. Uh, old business, the sports field mural. mural. Bill, that's... that's any movement? Um, well, I've done the outreach to the, the soccer folks, but I've not gotten any response. So uh, I've tried both email and uh, voicemails. Uh, so I will continue. But I think it's to the point where um, if I don't get something soon, I'll just do the measurements on the front of the building. Okay. And I'll help bring pictures. And we'll go ahead and start the uh, call for artists um, with our July meeting. And then we can show them some ideas of what it might look like instead of, you know. But I don't know if I should reach out to Jamie again at, uh, at Parks the and Rec. Yeah. And, and he's the one who gave me the information as to contact email and, and yeah. phone. But yeah, anyway. that's yeah. yeah, go ahead and reach out to Jamie one more time. See if he has an alternate oh. <coughs> um, contact. Someone else. I just I'll let him know that mm -hmm. I, I contacted Jim, mm -hmm. yeah. the president of. Can I leap in and make a absolute a comment on it? Um, I went out there and um, and took a look at the building. I happen to have some photographs here if anybody wants to take a look. But um, the building, of course, has four sides. And there's one side that faces the soccer field, one side that faces the tennis courts, the front, or what appears to be the front, but actually has the men's toilet door in it, um, <laughs> faces the road. And the back, with the ladies' toilet door, faces a children's playground. And so I was thinking that there's real opportunity there for somebody to get very creative with their wraps and, and so on, you know, to, to have a kids-oriented thing on one side, tennis on the other, foot, soccer on the other, and Lord only knows what on the <laughs> one that faces the road. The, the, the highest profile ones were the, the soccer and possibly tennis on the side. So we yeah. were going to initially start with those two, but that's mm -hmm. a great observation on yeah. your part. And Graham, and we kind of did that at, at Sisler too. Yes, with I, the, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, where we did like I, a I little bit of a wrap. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, there's a, there's a city bench with a city trash can and a uh, one of those little tiny libraries. Um, on a stick, you know, you know, you've seen them with a little yes. birdhouse type thing, um, uh, alongside that um, that parking lot there, and and I was, I I don't know, it just seemed to me that the the, the opportunity to link the two, um, you know, to somehow get the kids off the swings and into reading books or mm. kids who want to read books onto the swings, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whatever. Um, there seems to be an opportunity there to link those. Okay. Anyone else? Was he in? My question is about the restrooms. I've been there multiple times with grandkids on the playground. The restrooms are always locked. So is that a factor? Are they ever available? Or is that something just to probably be Probably during game time. Yeah, I think they probably only uh, open them during, <coughs> you know, uh, times of the game. Same with concession. I've never seen the concessions open there. Mm -hmm. but Right. That doesn't mean never, it just means right. I've never seen them. Yeah. yeah. I drive past it two or three times every day, and I've never seen them open. <laughs> well, also, like, for instance, over at the Craig Park, um, the, re the public restrooms there are on, like, a timer where they lock and open at certain times, mm. you know, kind of thing. These and don't they... seem to ever be open. Okay. Well, it's okay. easy to keep them clean that way. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, Abby, yeah, that's something we can check not. up on. <laughs> I don't know if that's an issue for public art, but you know, yeah. <laughs> um, we're just painting in mural. But uh, okay. I'm sure that they have a system. <coughs> but uh, I can look into that if you'd like. So by next month, I will have uh, the measurements for that building, and you've got some great photos. We we did have some as well, but uh, I'll, if you have those electronically, that'd be yeah, I can super. send them to you. Yeah, that'd be mm -hmm. super. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else on the ball fields? Okay, moving on, Black Heritage Project. I think that was well covered by Stephen. Illuminated art boxes. There's nothing going on with those at the moment. And now over to Diane with Name the Pelican. Well, your contest has gone gangbusters. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I've got um, probably about, uh, last I checked, it was about 278 uh, responses. Now, of wow. course, some of them are duplicates, of course, but we have them in constant contact so that we can download them into an Excel file and then sort them, and, and we have those stamp dates on when we receive them. So when you get them in the July meeting, whoever you choose, we, if it's a duplicate name, we'll be able to handle that. That's so, great. Yeah, a lot of good response. Good name? Yeah, very creative. So, but yeah. a lot of duplicates, you know, too. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing this when the uh, when we pass the deadline, which is mm -hmm. I guess coming up in a few weeks, right? Yes. So you'll have them before your July meeting. You'll, right. I mean, you'll have them at the July meeting to vote. Perfect. About the pelican. Just a very quick general comment. You'd have to get a vote from the um, the board and then allow public comments. Okay. Well, there are public comments at the end. Could you wait? Uh, no. <laughs> um, Lucienne, the water project? Yes, and can we now, instead of calling it the water project, call, call it what we decided last meeting, which is the Safford Gateway project? Absolutely. Sure. Um, we're making progress, although in baby steps. Um, I've just passed around a summary. Um, the city, through Pat McNeese, who I believe coordinated with um, Tom Function, possibly with Public Works, has recommended to us that the southern site for our gateway um, should be the northeast corner of Live Oak and Mears. There is a good parcel there. Um, which contains a drainage pond. It's all under city oversight. It's the perfect location for people coming up from the south. I think we really need to look at the topography a little bit more to see how much of it is level, not prone to flooding, etc. But it is certainly the best location to the south. The northernmost point. Um, we decided a long time ago is the city-owned parcel where the um, exercise equipment is near Live Oak. Um, so those two gateways to introduce Tarpon Springs to people who are using the trail, bikers, walkers, runners, etc. cetera. Um, before we can really put out a call for artists, there are a number of logistic questions that we need. Um, the two main ones, water service electric, Graham has pointed out a lot more, which I'll let him um, go through. Uh, and then there are pictures, both aerial pictures and street level pictures of the southern site. So um, Graham, if you'd proceed with your ideas, and then um, well, we'll throw it open for the rest of the committee to add concerns. I'm not, that I'm not we sure there are ideas, more more um, of considerations. You know, considerations. Yeah, um, if you if you actually you know go there and have a look at where the trail crosses um, uh, uh, mirrors there, um, you've got the um, it, it's used as a divider on the um, on the uh, southwest road, um, Safford. And so if you've got people on the trail, um, children, people on bicycles, whatever, uh, they're going to have to cross the road to get to the project if we want them to access the project. And 
it's not a particularly busy street, but I don't know whether we would have to have um, a crosswalk there of some kind. You know, whether it just be white lines painted on the roadway or whether it has to be something more official or, or what in order to um, mitigate any possible safety hazard. You know, I just don't know. Um, and if we do, how much would it cost and who would pay for it? Hopefully not the artist. <laughs> Um, I thought, you know, if we're going to have electricity there, the simplest way to do it, if you don't need a lot of electricity, is a, a couple of solar panels on a stick. You know, you see, you see those all over the place. Um, people put up sticks, put solar panel on top, and it powers whatever is at the bottom. And it, as long as you don't need a lot of electricity, that, mm -hmm. that works. You can have storage batteries that, you know, would work for the evening and so on. Um, <clears throat> don't know about flooding from the storage pond. If you go and look at the storage pond, there are two outflows or inflows from that pond, one headed south, one headed um, west. Um, I don't know where the west one goes, but the south one, I think, goes over to, towards, certainly towards the water-filled ditch on the south side of um, Mears. Um, don't know whether there's any restrictions on structures that can be placed near those things. Um, I wasn't so much worried about um, uh, about Stephen's fence structure because that's not a structure. But I don't, you know, we don't know what this um, this sculpture is going to be like. So you know, maybe there's some question there. Um, two other things. One which is here in the list, and, and that is that you're right on a corner where a lot of there's a lot of traffic going to um, the city dump. Um, you know, which is just around the corner there on Mears. <coughs> and I, I, I don't know, you know, I mean, I've seen people go around that corner with their trailers, you know, contractors, and they're, they're not too fussed about mounting the curb. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, maybe it's something well, to think about. Well, it's uh, by ordinance, part of the public art ordinance, we're required to have insurance on all the public art pieces. Okay, well, that's In good. In fact, that's what cover the, um, the, the yeah, naiads. Yeah. Um, something that the artist is going to have to consider is that um, catty corner from where this sculpture is going to be um, on the um, south west corner of that intersection are a couple of benches. There's a trash can in between them, mm -hmm. all provided by the city. Uh, the trash can is anyway. I don't know about the benches. Who put those there? Kidding. And there's a, um, a pole with a, a, a sort of aging container there that obviously used to contain some leaflets, some sort of uh, advertising literature for something. I, I don't know what it was, um, but the, um, you know, the artist with his sculpture is going to have to attract people away from that particular thing, which looks you know, kind of a nice place to sit underneath the trees and the shade. Um, it's a busy bench. On the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see a lot of people sitting there. Mm -hmm. It's something to consider. Bill, do you have any comments? No. Robert? Um, the, uh, the one on the, in the south, it's really an a, a awfully sterile place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, it's, I didn't even, you know, from this photograph, didn't even recognize it as being around here. Uh, but anyway, um, I think some of what Graham brought up, though, about, about some of these sites is, and maybe since we're revising this thing to this Safford Gateway, um, you know, the, the whole thing is it needs to be open and, and uh, inviting, but also needs to be, there should be an intimacy to it once you're there. There should mm -hmm. be some reason to hang around it. Maybe this is a good place where we should consider, and we've talked about this before, using landscape art as much as, mm -hmm. as uh, an object. Mm -hmm. Somebody designing something, uh, um, you know, a, a garden or, a, you know, a, a, uh, um, something that's growing, and to, to use uh, up, up this way, of course, you have more trees and stuff you can relate to, but down there, it is so... Sterile. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a road to the dump, is what it seems like. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, it, yeah. and, and, and this yeah. can really enhance it somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, yeah, it's um, so that we might want. It's not a nice place. Yeah, we might want to. To it's a new road. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, it's a new road. It's a new road. It's got yeah. some palm trees on it now. Is there any reason that you wouldn't move that southern point to like a little bit closer to MLK? You know, so it won't be at that big intersection. I mean, are you married to the, the those two locations, or is that, it? That was one of the things that I wondered. Is um, um, further north, yeah, we've already got bit. the um, the museum, the you know the um, uh, depot, depot, and um, there's some spare okay. space there that um, is is owned by the city. I don't know; it's not really spare, um, but you could, you know, and that's right downtown, in the, in the old part of the town, and maybe maybe you just pretend the gateway's there. I well, don't know. there's 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 issues with that because. It's, it's owned by the county at that point. Oh. And the other thing, too, is there's been discussion. I don't know where it's gone. I haven't heard about it for a couple of months, but they want to recreate uh, a, a railroad-type arm that goes over the, the road. I think they decided well, just to use that existing. Oh, the pole? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or, a, or down, down at MLK. Semaphore, yes. Yeah, there's but semaphore. just, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, by, by you. MLK would be nice. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's up to you guys. Just a thought. Taking Robert's idea for a landscape <coughs> Wasn't an idea, work. it was a suggestion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, well, just rifting off that, um, Considering the northern end, would you echo that approach? Would you create something entirely different? Um, how, how do you see the two north well, It depends south? on whether it's one artist or two artists. You see how one artist can effectively work with mm -hmm. two different things. Mm -hmm. That's a continuity that's really good. If it was two entirely different artists, then it would be two entirely different pieces. But I think it's a chance to, to deal with, one, environmental issues, uh, go get your water feature in there, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it, you know, just brings to, you know, the br brings up the whole question of, of place in terms of, uh, um, you know, a, a, a piece of art as place and a piece of art as, as far as natural growth or, or design or whatever. It could be a plaza. It could be something that, you know, de designs a, a small little mini park. And you ha there's a lot of artists there that do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, it's huge. Uh, um, it could fit within the budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it would be, you know, it, it's something that we've been wanting to do something, I think, in, involving uh, environmental kind of right. or, or topiary or whatever, you know, like growing stuff, living art. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Sienne, back to you. Do you have anything? No, I, I really like that approach. It, some of you know that I'm an avid Florida native plant gardener, so I'm, you know, conceptually it's... Um, Thank you, Robert. It's, oh, Debbie? I think that would be really important, too, that they be native plants. Oh, yeah. oh that goes without saying, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be so important. <clears throat> Can you find any? And that <laughs> you can. Yeah. There's plenty. Well, yeah. and it, it solves the whole idea of topography and how much responsibility we may or may not have to take for a more traditional sculptural mm -hmm. piece of art. It sort of turns that back into the project. So <coughs> That um, desolate thought. piece of wasteland that's right next door to the, the triangle is um, currently for sale for development. It's, um, it's earmarked for... Development oh, of some kind. I so like it. May, maybe I, the developer yeah. will pay for this thing, whatever it is. Hmm. So. Okay, if there's no further discussion on this, Megan, could you give us the update on uh, on our budget? Yes, currently, um, as stated on the last, and I'll just repeat it. Get it logged in. Um, is two fifteen for two hundred and fifteen thousand four hundred and ninety two dollars is the balance. We did get notification from Pat McNeese that Take 5 Car Wash has come in for site work and building permits. Instead of doing public art, they will be paying into the fund, and the amount of payment due will be $10,500. Um, it has not been paid yet, and so it will be 
um, do on the final inspection. Um, so that is, and then actually I just got an email. Excuse me, I was reading my email. <laughs> <laughs> but it is pertinent to our discussion right now is the North Lake Estates Residential Planned Development Project has applied for their site work permit. They have not proposed a public art project to date, so their fee has been calculated at $13,500. Um, everything still must be reviewed by the building development part department. Um, the fee will be due prior to a final inspection. Um, so those are two possible um, amounts that are in the queue okay. coming forward. Thank you. Um, next one, the Tarpon Springs Library 25th anniversary. Um, I'd like to defer that. I've been looking at some various grant opportunities. I haven't come up with anything yet. I've been poking around. There are some things out there. Um, the CRA production art. Diane, we have nothing this month. No. Okay, new business, the children's art. Um, to date, we haven't had any response from the library or Parks and Rec about getting the children's art. Coincidentally, Carrie was here just before the meeting started, and she's going to check up on it. Uh, if none is forthcoming, um, we'll just have to uh, like to defer this to next month, and um, you know, see if we get any uh, children's art. If not, we'll just proceed as usual with the uh, you know the art boxes. Okay, the ordinance workshop is Wednesday, June 29th at 2 p.m. I believe it's going to be here. Yes, um, and thank you to every, um, to Graham and, and Joan who uh, gave us great input uh, for in preparation for the workshop. Um, Megan uh, did a great job of putting together a binder for you. So every ordinance from all those cities in a, are in alphabetical order in your binders and, and also um, the comparison sheet that um, Jan, uh, Graham and, and Joan found, that's in there. So. I would ask you to take the time between this meeting and the workshop and really go through them and highlight some things, maybe put like a paper clip on it so that we can bring it to the discussion, you know, um, at the workshop. It, it, has there been a methodology set up for how we want to try to attack that? Do we want to start off with the overall, you well, know, the, as things are compared, you know, well, the, you can get down in the weeds real quick and we can get nothing done. So that, that's my concern is that we, we have some sort of a method that we... Well, I th the, the thing is, I think, I think if we look at these things, a, a lot of them are boilerplate, mm -hmm. okay? You know, they, they follow a certain pattern, like the definition of what a building is, so on and so forth. Um, what I think I would like us to do is to focus on just some high points um, the construction costs that trigger the assessment, that seems to vary widely, anything from 250 to a million. Um, Graham indicated something that um, some municipalities base it, interestingly enough, on the square footage, so much for square foot. Uh, what percentage of the project, most municipalities seem to be at 1%. And uh, the other thing, too, is... Um, this is not financial, but um, I would like to amend the student member on the committee to be an ad hoc member without a vote. Because I think that while we would love to have a, a, you know, a younger person and a student on the committee, um, I, I think that they're not quite prepared to, to vote on what we're dealing with. And, uh, and uh, I was wondering if this, uh, Let's start with Lucy Ann. Do you have any other points that you think we should <coughs> highlight? I think that would help us refine, you know, what we're going to be looking at. There's a lot of stuff we could just... Well, I, I think the big consideration for me is whether we uh, um, continue to allow developers' discretion... Exactly. ...or um, do a simple pay into the fund. Right. I, that's, I think again, that's, that's critical. Again, that's what a lot of the municipalities seem to do. Thank you. I forgot to mention that. No, that's the big point that I think is driving the majority of this. Right. Graham? Yeah. The, um, um, <clears throat> many of the municipalities separate out their ordinances into two parts. One, the organization of their public art committee, and, um, and the, the other part 
is usually a, is a completely separate part of their ordinances, which is the funding of the public mm -hmm. art committee, and um, uh, and and ours is all sort of commingled together. And I'm not sure whether we shouldn't um, do something similar to that and and make some changes that I think are long overdue on the organization of the public art committee. You mentioned one of them, the student um, um, committee uh, member. Uh, I think um, that there could be some stronger language in there for advising the commissioner board of commissioners um, as to how the progression through the committee from non-voting member to voting member ought to work right. regardless of what they actually do because I notice they're not really concerned about that mm -hmm. of late um, for whatever reason you know I've been a beneficiary of that so I think I can bring it up without any fear of, of people thinking I'm, I'm doing sour grapes um, but you know maybe we want to put something like that in there Maybe there are other things in the organizational rules that we want to change, mm -hmm. um, in addition to um, how to get um, more money out of the art tax. Right. Well, that's Robert? why I want you all oh. to take a look at, you know, yeah. what the other ones have done. And what I could do is bring flip chart paper that sticks on the wall, and then we can put different categories, and I can write, you know, but your thoughts so that everybody c can look at it, and then we can decide on a new format if you'd like. Yeah, Robert? I'm, I'm just happy that we're doing this. <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah. it will go a long ways to uh, uh, just sort of putting things, putting things uh, uh, in, in a way that makes it work better f for us right. mm -hmm. and, and the city. Debbie? I definitely think that the changes would facilitate what we're supposed to do as a committee. Right. Okay. So. Okay, uh, so we'll see you all here Wednesday, June 29th at 2 p.m. I'm going to go out a little bit out of order here. Tina, would you like to make your comment? I'm not going to keep you waiting. Just very briefly, I'd like to say that uh, I really appreciated the, the PAC um, uh, committee, the, the way that this, that this board showed respect and concern for the input of the community. And I would like to respectfully suggest that when there are projects that have to do with the Greek Town Historic District, that perhaps you might consider giving some similar kinds of um, opportunities for, for input from the community. Of course, you're looking at Bruce Lamb, who's one, from one of the oldest <laughs> families in the community, but it would be nice also, it would, it would be a marvelous art, art to have other voices also, because I think there are ways in which uh, things might be open mm -hmm. in the future. Okay, and, thank you. And we're also likely to have more reparations for the area. Mm -hmm. Also in the future, that can be planned. So okay, yeah. great. Okay, staff comments. Diane? Oh, my staff comments was basically just about the public art mm -hmm. uh, ordinance the workshop and just, you know, what we've got for you. We've got your nice big notebooks, so please bring those with you. And like I said, use highlighters, use paper clips, use whatever you'd like. <laughs> So that we can, you know, really be productive. Just a comment. So we're really going to look conceptually at the ordinance mm -hmm. with our workshop. And the actual writing of the, the legal piece of it, is that something that uh, Mr. Trask? And well, I, th I think once we identify the changes that we right. would like, you know, um, I think I'll tr try to take a stab at him adding them to the ordinance and then Having sending it, it to Mr. Trask okay. to right. it has to be take done. a look at. Yeah, I mean, and there's a particular yeah. format. It has to be done in a strike through. Right. So um, yeah. what might be the most efficient thing to do is, and I'd be willing to take this on, we could collate the, the comments that we have. Mm -hmm. I could type them up so that if they do have to go into, you know, into the ordinance, maybe Megan, all she had to do is copy and paste them in, in a, mm -hmm. you know, with striking out the, you know, the old text. You know, it's, uh, you know, as I said, I don't anticipate a lot of changes in the boilerplate. Right. So, I, you know, I don't see this, you know, going on for 20,000 pages. But, uh, you know, as I said, I think, you know, we'll just look at the main points that we've discussed. 
And I think if we concentrate on that. Yeah. Well, I think like what Graham man mentioned about, take a look when you go through some of these um, other uh, cities, is that how they structure it? Because we could actually, you know, maybe organize it in a little bit better way that it seems more logical when you right. read it, you know, kind of thing like this is for developers, this is for, you know, participants, this, you know, this is how, you know, kind of right. thing, just a little bit logical. Yeah. Right. You know. Well, actually what um, the, the format that Graham suggested, to me at least, makes the most sense, but maybe you'd like to uh, email Tom Trask and ask him what would involve, you know, transitioning from the ordinance the way it's written now to like a two-part ordinance. Is it just a matter of doing subtitles or, you know, well, I think we should maybe do that after the workshop. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. 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 no, no, I'm, I, I don't want to put the cart okay. before, before the horse. But the horse. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. So, did you miss committee general comments? Not yet. Okay. Uh, Megan, staff comments. Okay. Uh, do we? No, I do not. <laughs> okay, committee comments. Going in my usual order, Lucy Ann. Um, just to be clear on the Safford Gateway project. I don't see, if, if we're going in the direction, direction of a landscape call, and I'll draft that for the next meeting, um, that sort of obviates the questions to staff about mm -hmm. electric. So right. am I clear on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Bill? But not crosswalk. Graham? Um, <clears throat> in, the, um, in the minutes, for the May 11th meeting, um, item four, it said Deb McKinney and Troop 721 postponed to the June 8th meeting. I believe this is the June 8th meeting. Yeah, well, that's, we haven't Did heard we? anything from her. Yeah, no, she um, she said that she's having a hard time getting the kit, rallying the, ch the kids, so she wanted to just go ahead and defer it until further notice. Okay. Okay, so that, that's deferred till further notice. Okay. But the, the minutes still stand because that's what was yeah. discussed at the no, last meeting. No, I was thing. just but asking why just it wasn't for in the right. June 8th, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Robert? I don't have anything to say. I may even leave. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie? I'm good. Okay. Stephen, do you have anything to add? Lynn left? I can't see over the... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, Annie, do you have any comments or anything? Okay, uh, I guess that leaves me, and I just want to thank everybody. I think this has been an ex extraordinarily productive meeting, and uh, looking forward to uh, shredding our ordinance and replacing it with something that really makes sense. And um, I will, let's see, the meeting is adjourned at 3.27 p.m., our next regular meeting, and there was an error on the agenda, is July 13th at 2 p.m. Diane tried to sneak us past July, but I caught her. Okay, meeting adjourned. All right, we'll give you out your notebooks. Okay, and when you're done, please feel free to give it back to me, and I can recycle and reuse the book. Thank you. <laughs> and the paper. <laughs> and the paper, right? Oh, homework.